and welcome to Hot Off the List. I'm Mr. Jonathan, and I'm here today with a special guest. Kate Kleiss is the author of the 43 Old Cemetery Road series and the Regarding series, both of which are illustrated by her sister, M. Sarah Kleiss. In her spare time, she likes to read, write, laugh, tinker, walk for hours, and get lost in beautiful places. Today, we're talking to her about Mystery on Magnolia Circle, which introduces us to Ivy, who's just broken her leg and thinks her whole summer is ruined. Little does she know that she's going to be tasked with two mysteries, which she'll have to enlist the help of her friend, her dog, and a mysterious classmate in order to solve. Hi, Kate. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Mr. Jonathan. You, I need to put you on my payroll. You do a better job teasing than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. And so I hear that you wanted to share a little bit about how to write a book. I do. I, I always say I can teach people how to write a book in about 30 seconds. Okay, I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Well, I have to say, when I was a kid, I knew I wanted to write, but I wrote terrible books because I, I thought books just needed a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so I would write what I thought were like, they were kind of like this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened. You know what I mean? The books never really got off the ground. So I figured out a story should not look like a straight line. It should look like this. Tell me if you can see that, Mr. Jonathan. I can see. Okay, okay. okay perfect. Okay. So when I'm starting a book, I draw a circle on you know a piece of scratch paper. And then I realize, okay, what do I need? I start, I put some numbers around it, like a clock, and I start with my main character. Okay. And I want to know who the main character is in the first chapter of the book. And then I give the main character a big problem. As you, as you mentioned, Ivy breaks her leg in the, in the first chapter of the book. And then I send my character on a journey. You know, you can think of Dorothy like in The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. And this is where you introduce your supporting characters, like the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, the Lion. About halfway through the book, I force my character to make a big decision. It's often a bad decision. <laughs> think, about, think about Hansel and Gretel, um, you know, deciding to go in uh, that cottage made of candy, right? They probably mm -hmm. shouldn't do it, but they do. And then the journey continues. And then I throw a big oh no at my character. Mm -hmm. And that leads them to an aha. They get a little bit of wisdom at the end. So this is... When, I, when I'm writing a book, I never get all the pieces right on my first drafts, but at least I know what I have to do, and I, that makes it a lot easier for me. So if you can, you can use that circle, Mr. Jonathan, if you want to write a mystery or a video game or a school play or an opera, every story has that same shape. So I use that all the time. And feel I free, love that. Feel free that's, to steal it if you like That's it. great advice. And I'm thinking about how it fits uh, in your book. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. I see where that happens. It fits in every book. That's the thing. Once you know, and I feel like I'm ruining every book and every movie you're going <laughs> to read and see this year. But once you know the trick, you can use it to write your own books, which I think is as fun as reading. Well, thank you for sharing with us. So I know that you work with your sister quite a bit, and uh, your sister is M. Sarah Kleiss, who is an illustrator, and I'm wondering what comes first? Is it the illustrations or the words, or is it a combination? That's a great question. Usually the story comes first. Um, you know, people ask this to songwriters all the time, um, melody or words. I feel like in songwriting, it can go either way. With books, it's usually the story comes first, and then the illustrator is bringing another layer to it. And I feel like the illustrator always takes the story to a deeper, they have to bring out something that I didn't see because I'm not really a visual person, but they, they bring out the visuals and it adds either humor or depth or just warmth. Um, yeah. So my job comes first. And um, in fact, we have a picture book coming out next year that will take Sarah almost a year to illustrate. I can write a picture book in a couple of days and then I rewrite it over a month or two, but her job is longer in that case. Wow. And you also said that your brother is a librarian. So what about your family do you think made all three of you such book lovers? Well, and then I have a sister who's a poet. And wow. Another sister. We're all kind of we're uh, we're not very uh what we're deep, we're not very broad. My dad was a writer, my mom was uh studied acting. You know what? I think it was the fact that my parents never gave us what we wanted 
for our birthday. <laughs> we never, we never had, we had the worst toys, I feel like in the neighborhood, but we always had art supplies and paper and we made paper dolls. We made our own Halloween costumes. Um, you know how a lot of libraries now have maker spaces. I think my mom yes. invented, I think my mom invented that movement because our dining room table was just this great big maker space. So um, I think that's how you become creative, just by making stuff and making a lot of mistakes along the way, you know? Very interesting. So I'm also wondering, you've written for both adults and for children. Do you have a preferred audience or do you think that writing for both taps into different facets of your personality? You know what? I don't think there's much difference, to be honest, in writing for kids or writing for adults. I also wrote for People Magazine for 15 years. So you can ask me anything you want about Brad Pitt. I will know, <laughs> <laughs> I know everything. I have a PhD in that poor man. Um, there's not much difference. Storytelling, that circle I showed you is Grimm's Fairy Tales. It's Star Wars. It's Harry Potter. It's James Bond. It's a story is a story. And I feel like the reason it works is because it's sort of how life works. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I don't know. I think it's the same. Writing is hard for me, um, but it's one of those things. It's the only thing that I do that when I'm doing it, I don't feel like I should be doing something else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> if I'm watching Netflix for the third hour in a row, I think I should probably be doing something else. When I'm writing, I feel like this is where I should be. It feels, it feels, it, sometimes it doesn't feel good because it's hard, but it always feels right. I'm sure that your fans agree. Oh, you're nice. You're nice. They don't see my rough drafts though, John. <laughs> <laughs> so this book is full of puppy love. I'm wondering, are you a dog lover? Hey, I'm a dog lover. I'm a dog lover. I'm a cat lover. My book coming out next year is about a cat. Um, you know, I think there are so many children's books I think about animals because think about it. When you're young, you're sort of like a kitten or a puppy. You don't have any money. You don't have any power. You don't have a lot of say in what you in what your day looks like. So I feel like young readers especially identify with animals. Um and, you know, animals don't talk other than a mew and a, or a bark. So they never really, <laughs> it's hard to fight with an animal because they can't talk. <laughs> so they never really disappoint us. Um, so I don't know. Are you a dog lover or a cat lover? Oh, I'm both. I have both at my house. So <laughs> Nice, nice. Yes, I think they make us human. I think they bring out the best in people, don't you? Absolutely. I and think I think you can tell a lot of pe about people by their pets as well. I think so, I think so too. So you inject a lot of history into this novel, and it seems like you love to travel. Do you have either a favorite historical topic or a favorite place that you like to be? I love traveling. I love being at an airport. My favorite, I just love the feeling of having my hot chocolate or hot tea or coffee as I'm waiting in a lounge, getting ready to go someplace. It's like trying on different lives. It's actually, I feel like traveling is a lot like reading because you're like stepping into a different life. I actually, um, my midlife crisis is I bought a little apartment in Europe and it was very cheap. <laughs> so it's not an extra, it's not a fancy place, but it's a, it's a little place in Lisbon, Portugal that I disagree wow. with once in a while. Yeah. Wow. That's fun and a great excuse to like force you to travel. You don't have to force me to travel. <laughs> <laughs> you have to force me to stay home. <laughs> so in addition to travel, uh, you also, you write about crime and this book has mysteries involved as well. So I'm hoping you will play a game with me that is mystery centric. I'm going to share my screen here. Can you see my screen? Oh my heavens, I love it already, yes. We're going to play a game called Detective Kate. <laughs> and in honor of Ivy's sleuthing skills, where uh, I'm going to describe a not so bright criminal okay. and I'll have you guess why they were apprehended. Oh good. And don't worry, these are very hard. I don't think you'll be able to guess, but if you do, I mean, honestly, bonus points okay. that you can cash in for, I don't know, we'll figure it out. All right, are you ready? Yes. Okay, crook number one. In Arizona, a would-be robber jumped through a bedroom window and was immediately undone after landing in what? 
Is this a true? Is this a this, true? These are all true. I should preface this. These are all true. I even verified them and had to go hunt down the actual people it happened to. I'm going to guess the robber jumped into a bathtub. <gasps> oh, that's a very good guess. It's actually a laundry basket. <laughs> he got stuck in a laundry basket. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Criminal number two. An Iowa man was busted for using a stolen driver's license after the bouncer of the club he was trying to enter said what? You're too old to come into this bar. He said, hey, that's me. It was actually his driver's license. <laughs> how, how did he get the bouncer's driver's license? I don't know. All right. Number three. In Nebraska, an armed man was unable to drive the car he'd just stolen from a family because why? Oh, it was a stick shift rather than- That awesome. is correct. It was a stick <laughs> shift. <laughs> These are good. These are good. All right, number four. An Oregon man who planned to rob a store wielding a baseball bat was thwarted by the clerk because blank. <laughs> was that store clerk a part-time umpire or something is there a, what do you, i don't know i don't i'm stumped that's a good guess he actually was wielding a baseball bat and robbing a gun store so oh. not a great idea it didn't work out <laughs> all right we have two more and Iowa, in Iowa, two men were apprehended for an attempted home invasion after their brilliant disguises made them easy to identify after the crime. What were their disguises? Oh, it was something, it must have been something that stayed on their skin. Um, were they, um, were they blue Smurfs? Oh, this is a very good guess. This, I think that's a correct answer because they used permanent markers to disguise oh. themselves. And then they couldn't wash them off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have one more Detective Kate. When told that the manager was the only one with access to the safe, a would-be Chicago bank robber did what? When told there was only one person who had access to the, the would-be, um, um, I have no idea. I don't know, called a lifeline? I don't know, what? Oh, uh, he left his phone number for the manager to call him back. <laughs> So the criminals that we've talked about are, are definitely not as smart as the criminals you have in your book, but I wanted to share that with you. Those are, those are very good. I feel like those could be the basis of a whole entire book. Like, oh, um, yeah. right. <laughs> no, no. I don't think those, I don't think those criminals made it past fourth grade. Do you? Oh, apparently not. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. I hope everyone has a fantastic school year. I think this is going to be everyone's best school year. Do you agree? I agree. I, I think finally like we've that. gotten everything like uh, we've gotten back on track as far as when we were all out for a little bit. And now this is a fresh start. It's going to be a great year. I think this is going to be the year people read great books and write great books. I agree. If you haven't, for those of you watching, if you have not read Mystery on Magnolia Circle by Kate Kleiss, it is such a fun, sweet little read. It will touch your heart and it will have you kind of racing ahead to try and figure out pieces and put them together faster than Ivy. So pick this up at your local library or your local bookstore. It's Mystery on Magnolia Circle by Kate Kleiss. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. You. Thank you. This was fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>